Yeah. Get started. Should I start? Yeah. Um, so, hello, I am Tomer Gilad from the Hebrew University, and I'm here to present you uh, PCC Vivace and the kernel module uh, that tries to implement it. Um, so, let's talk a bit about congestion control. Um, first of all, uh, we have uh, the senders, the, in, uh, the network, and the receivers. The senders are pre uh, choose when to send their data using either the congestion window or pacing. And uh, the receivers, they're pretty much passive. They only send acknowledgments. Um, the network tries its best to route the packet through, but uh, there are many different types of networks. Um, you can have small buffers, uh, random loss, competing flows, etc. Um, so there are a few approaches to congestion control, uh, and it's the uh, congestion control's job to avoid congesting the network. Um, the classical TCP approach, uh, such as uh, Cubic, hardwires uh, the response uh, to a packet event. Um, for example, Cubic will back off based on a single loss, which makes it uh, really easy to uh, implement and think about, but suboptimal in cases such as random loss, um, where obviously it will have a really low rate. Um, the other problem with uh, Cubic, it uh, fills large buffers, causing uh, buffer bloat and high self-induced latency. Uh, there's the BBR approach, which uh, tries to model the network uh, as a single link. It's a more of a white box approach. Uh, and it, uh, it gets some really impressive uh, performance, um, but it still has uh, a few problems. It uh, fills buffers to some extent and drains them all the time, uh, causing some self-induced latency. And uh, it has high loss rate uh, when there are multiple BBR flows competing with each other. And the third approach uh, we are going to talk about, uh, PCC's approach. PCC stands for Performance Oriented Congestion Control. Um, it tries to monitor the performance of uh, various sending rates and then adapt the rate to maximize its utility. PCC uh, uses monitor intervals. Uh, each interval is about one RTT long and corresponds to a single sending rate. Um, and in each interval, uh, PCC will observe the, uh, the network uh, reaction to this sending rate. It uh, looks uh, at uh, these parameters, the throughput latency, the change in latency, and the loss rate. And with these uh, statistics, it, calculate the, it calculates the utility of uh, this sending rate. Um, this means PCC will rely on a causal relation between the sending rate and the value of the utility. And it allows PCC to treat the network as a black box and make as few assumptions as possible about the structure of the network. So the utility function, um, it should reflect the application's uh, performance objectives. Uh, these can be uh, things like high throughput, low latency, jitter, etc. Um, it should also guarantee uh, fairness in, uh, when facing multiple uh, PCC senders using the same utility. And um, here we have uh, this uh, example graph of a, of a single PCC sender on a link where the utility increases as long as the rate below the link capacity and once it's above, uh, it's starting to decrease. So this is the thing we want to maximize. We want to have the maximum utility as uh, possible. Um, so in our implementation, we are going to give uh, two utility functions, um, Allegro and Vivace, which are named after the versions of uh, PCC uh, that they were first introduced in. Um, Allegro being uh, the first version of PCC uh, from NSDI uh, 15 and uh, Vivace from uh, NSDI 18. 
So Allegro is a completely loss-based uh, utility. Um, it, uh, it rewards uh, the sender for uh, sending at a certain rate, and uh, this reward diminishes with the loss rate, and uh, it penalizes for loss. Vivace, on the other hand, um, it, has, uh, it has still uh, rewards and penalties based on the current rate, but um, it also penalizes for uh, the change in latency over time, and uh, like uh, before, you have a penalty for the loss rate. Um, but these aren't the only utility functions in mind. Um, PCC uh, is really flexible, so you can uh, plug in different utility functions. Uh, other utility functions we are thinking about are things like rate scavengers, uh, which try to utilize uh, links and back off on the first sign of competition. Um, maybe using Jitter uh, uh, could help doing that. Uh, other utility functions uh, may uh, use latency directly instead of the latency change, like the Vivace utility. And this uh, may give some uh, guarantees about the latency uh, when the network is relatively known, or uh, you could use that to keep uh, buffers slightly full and uh, in wireless scenarios where the capacity suddenly changes, this could prove helpful. So now that uh, we have the utility function, um, we want to make uh, the next step. Uh, we want to uh, decide what will be the next rate uh, tested. So we are using uh, two intervals and use them to calculate the uh, utility values and uh, then we calculate the gradient of the utility. Um, then we use gradient ascent to quickly maximize it. Um, so PCC has uh, three states in its uh, state machine uh, in uh, the rate control part, um, startup, probing, and moving. So the startup is uh, similar to a TCP slow start. Um, the goal is to quickly reach uh, within 50% of the link capacity. Um, it, uh, like TCP slow start, doubles the sending rate on each RTT, <coughs> but uh, it backs off when the utility starts to decrease. Uh, it isn't necessarily on the first loss. Uh, it can be, uh, for instance, in an environment of uh, random loss, uh, the loss rate is the same with all the rates you're testing, so um, the the a uh, startup will handle that better than TCP slow start. Once the utility decrease, uh, we are moving to the probing state. Here we try slightly uh, lower and slightly higher uh, sending rates to uh, find what is the direction we need to continue on. Um, and we do that uh, twice uh, to get a conclusive gradient. Um, once the two uh, gradients agree with each other, then we know uh, with high certainty what is the direction we need to move on, so uh, to maximize our utility. We then transition to the moving state, uh, which uh, the goal here is to make uh, quick steps towards uh, maximizing the utility in the direction that, uh, that we found earlier. Um, the point is, on each uh, sending rate, we calculate the gradient using the last two intervals and take a step depending on the size of the gradient. Uh, we repeat that as long as the utility increases, and once it's, it's starting to decrease, we go to probing state again. Um, so this was uh, PCC, uh, PCC Vivace, and it works. It has user space implementations that uh, do quite well. Um, and now we started porting it to kernel. Uh, we thought it was going to be easy because the user space code is uh, written, but 
obviously we were wrong. Uh, so the first problem we encountered was uh, managing the intervals, uh, associating the uh, packets results, uh, either delivered or lost, to the intervals they were sent in. Um, this is uh, one crucial part of uh, the PCC framework, because if it doesn't work well, then we can't have this relation between the sending rate and the utility. Um, so the user space implementations, they were based on uh, UDT, which had unique packet IDs, um, like something like we saw earlier with Quick. Um, and uh, we, have, uh, we had per packet uh, acknowledgements, which made it real easy to figure out uh, what packet was lost and uh, exactly at what interval was it sent. Um, the kernel implementation doesn't have these because uh, TCP is, uh, it doesn't, it just doesn't have the unique packet IDs and the per packet acknowledgements. So we only have an approximate environment uh, of, uh, of each packet. Uh, we only know approximately what interval it belongs. Uh, to help uh, mitigate that, uh, we introduced uh, an uncertainty bound to the PCC, meaning um, we'll ignore the start and end of each interval and only count statistics from packets sent uh, in the middle of an interval. Uh, that way, uh, we won't mix up between the intervals themselves. So you might ask yourself why not to use the rate samples. Uh, rate samples were introduced with BBR and uh, on a first glance they do exactly what we are trying to do with the monitor intervals. Uh, they have statistics about the, about the uh, packets lost, the packets delivered, and they sample over an interval of time. So we had a few problems with that. Um, First of all, they overlap, uh, which makes it kind of difficult uh, to manage. Uh, some packet could be uh, accounted for in a, in a few following great samples. Um, and uh, you can't uh, really configure when it, they start and end. So um, if they were short and non-overlapping, we could have grouped them together. If we could configure the length, we could say start now and later and have an interval as we want it. Um, and uh, we can do that. Another uh, problem is that uh, uh, they're missing uh, a key piece of information, which is the uh, sending rate uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the time the interval uh, was uh, and the rate sample was taken, uh, which means uh, it's hard to associate uh, the rate sample to the sending rate. Another challenge we had when implementing uh, PCC is dealing with these approximations. So um, we had the uh, packet uh, to interval approximation we had uh, earlier uh, in associating them. And uh, we have uh, other approximations uh, in the kernel implementation as well. Uh, the user space implementation uh, calculated the change in latency. Um, what it did was holding uh, out the RTT for each packet in an interval and then use some linear regression to have uh, a, a more accurate uh, uh, RTT gradient. Um, we obviously can do that because uh, holding such information in the kernel is, uh, is extremely costly. So we used uh, the smooth RTT at the beginning and the end of an interval and um, <coughs> tried to approximate the gradient using them. And there's the whole, um, well, moving from a float uh, utility to an integer one, so it, uh, it works a bit, a bit uh, worse. Um, this resulted in a, in a lot uh, of uh, instability in the gradients. Um, 
So uh, unstable gradients uh, really hurt the performance of the algorithm, so it's obviously bad. Um, what we did to help with that was uh, setting the minimum rate change to 2%, uh, meaning every time we test uh, slightly higher and lower uh, rates in the probing and even in the moving uh, states, uh, we'll force the rate change to be 2% to have um, more uh, correct gradients because the, uh, the difference won't be as noisy uh, with, uh, against a, a smaller uh, rate change. Um, so despite these problems, we have some uh, really good uh, initial results. Um, we tested it using uh, Pantheon, and we looked at the following three uh, uh, metrics, uh, the loss resilience, buffer bloat, and loss at convergence. And um, we compared it against uh, the user space versions because they are the two benchmark we are trying to implement, after all. Um, and uh, against Cubic uh, and BBR implementations. Uh, this was with uh, kernel uh, 4.16. Um, so high loss resilience, uh, this means uh, the amount of random loss the algorithm can handle while maintaining 75% of its maximal throughput. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, the kernel implementation uh, does well up to 5% of random loss, which is slightly higher than the uh, random loss that uh, the user space implementations uh, can handle. Oh, by the way, this was for with the Vivace utility. PCC kernel here is the Vivace utility function. Um, so it is uh, slightly more resilient to loss. Um, we attribute it uh, to the uh, to the uh, packet to interval association, which uh, slightly favors uh, delivered packets over lost. Um, and uh, we have here BBR, which does extremely well with 10% uh, loss and even at 15%, and cubic, which uh, yeah. Um, so. Um, the low buffer bloat, meaning how much uh, self-induced latency does the algorithm uh, causes. Um, so the, all of the PCC variants uh, do here uh, quite good. Um, well, the kernel uh, implementation does slightly worse than both of the user space. Again probably due to the bad calculation of the utility uh, of the latency gradient. Um, and you can see that both BBR and Cubic here increase the, uh, the latency as the buffer goes. The loss at convergence, meaning how many, uh, how much random loss uh, the algorithm causes when there are multiple competing flows with uh, the sa using the same algorithm at the convergence point. So um, BBR converges to somewhere about 15%. Uh, cubic does extremely well here. It uh, maintains uh, a really low uh, loss rate at convergence. But uh, the PCC uh, variants they all uh, have this uh, increasing uh, loss rate as the number of uh, flows increases. Um, this does well uh, up to about uh, 25 uh, f uh, competing flows where uh, then BBR starts to uh, uh, get ahead of, uh, of uh, the PCC variants. Um, so to conclude, um, we have these really promising initial results, but uh, we aren't done yet. This is still a work in progress, still in the early stages. Um, we want to uh, make some changes in the sampling uh, of the, in the kernel, 
uh, to have better, uh, um, better uh, statistics. Uh, right now, all we did was without making any change to the kernel API. Um, and uh, we are still debating on the right way to expose uh, the utility function to the user space. I mean, the obvious way would be to have separate uh, congestion controls, um, it, one for each utility function. Uh, but uh, we might want to have a bit more power for the applications. Uh, maybe having them uh, change some constants uh, in the utility or uh, stuff like that. Uh, we haven't decided on the right way to do that yet. Uh, the code is available at GitHub uh, on this link. And um, we have uh, a website with uh, much more detailed information about PCC with uh, links from, uh, to the papers and uh, nice infographics. So go ahead and check them out, test the code, tell us what you think. Um, thank you. Eric, does anything from your side? Let me know. Uh, I, I was actually curious if you did any tests with uh, app limited traffic, or these were all non app limited? No, these were all non app limited. Okay. Uh, we still assume uh, you have what to send all the time. Okay. Yeah, because that introduces a lot of very interesting and challenging problems. Yeah. Um, and a couple um, quick thoughts on the um, surprise on the uh, slide with the latency for the various congestion controls. Um, do you happen to know if the experiments were done with uh, FQ uh, QDisk or with internal pacing for BBR? So these were uh, using uh, Pantheon. So uh, I think the BBR uh, do, uh, does use FQ there. Uh, it w the way it was defined, okay. um, but uh, PCC, I don't remember whether it was with FQQ disk or not. Okay, and does PCC um, request pacing from the system, or does it is it window based? It is uh, using pacing. Pacing, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I was curious if you have. Um, uh, thoughts on or test results from how the Vivace algorithm behaves when there's um, very small amounts of buffering. So for example, uh, example uh, like a, a bottleneck buffer that has um, about 1% uh, of the BDP. Uh, so um, we don't uh, have results from the kernel implementation, but uh, mm -hmm. we do have results from the user space one. Okay. Um, Hopefully, the kernel implementation matches. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, it, I think it does uh, quite well there. It, uh, uh, I think it requires something like um, a buffer of uh, nine packets, where the BDP is something like eight packets. Uh, or no, I don't remember. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe we can take yeah. it over email. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. Eric? Yeah, so thanks for this uh, very nice talk. Uh, it looks very interesting and very promising, so um, feel free to, to send an RFC patch uh, on the dev, you know? Yeah, uh, that's, that's the eventual plan. Right now it's uh, not ready yet, but uh, someday it will be. Thanks. Hi. Thank you for the talk. Uh, did you do an experiment with Furnace? How do you do with multiple uh, PCC flows? How they react to each other? Um, so uh, they do converge. Um, and that's uh, somewhat uh, what you saw in the, with the loss rated convergence. You didn't see the, um, uh, the uh, the convergence itself, but uh, they converge to a fair uh, to a fair share. Okay, thank you. Uh, the um, 
uh, convergence brought to mind a question of, um, can you talk about the approach that Vivace takes for coexisting with Reno or cubic flows and, and how it keeps its probing um, from causing packet loss that causes the Reno and cubic flows to, to back off and, and yield yeah. too much bandwidth? So um, basically, since Vivace is uh, part uh, latency based, um, it, uh, it is somewhat less aggressive than, uh, than uh, cubic or Reno or any completely loss-based uh, uh, congestion control. Um, and uh, our experiments with the user space uh, prove that. We haven't done uh, uh, extensive evaluation of that with the kernel. Um, but, um, well, imagine uh, that uh, uh, Vivace is alone on a link. It will try to keep the buffers empty. Um, but uh, the uh, cubic, for example, uh, it is completely loss-based, so it will fill the buffers, uh, meaning it will get uh, more, uh, more bandwidth than the Vivace. Thank you, Tomer.